Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is Imperial Rome, part one. And we're going to talk about five terms that as you read more and learn more about the Roman world, especially in the first century, that you can kind of key in on these and use these as, as a gateway to really kind of dig into the complexities of this time period. So let's get into it. The first term for us is Augustus, although I don't know if we should be that happy about that. But anyway, so Augustus Caesar, or Octavian, or Octavius, uh, so this, is a pretty, this guy's a pretty big deal. Uh, so he's born in the year 23, right around the year 23, he dies in the year 14 CE, uh, and He's pretty significant for understanding kind of the first century in the Roman world and actually for what comes after, really for a couple of reasons. One certainly is that he's connected in a part of Caesar's family, Julius Caesar's family. Uh, he's part of the Roman Civil War and he's part of the Second Triumvirate and he's very successful after the Battle of Actium in really working to kind of consolidate and transform uh, what we understand the Roman world and Roman political authority to be. Uh, so that by the time he really kind of cements his authority as Augustus uh, and takes on the role of princeps, uh, that, that he has transformed this from a republic uh, into an empire where he is the imperator uh, and power, much much of the understanding of, of power uh, in the first century, you know, kind of runs through the patronage uh, that that Augustus uh, is is dealing out. Uh, he's also the you know, beginning, a lot of him and Julius, you know, the beginning of this Julio-Claudian dynasty and all this. So, you know, Augustus's reign is really, really central for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, you know, not only the expansion of, of Rome as well, this, this kind of then brings us to our, our second term, uh, which is slavery, right? Or enslavement. Uh, okay, it's bad. I think that if we spend a bit too much time in some classes and settings thinking fondly of the Roman world, that we will come away from this with a certain sense of, wow, this must have been wonderful. Look at all the architecture and the aqueducts. Isn't this great? <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's great. But who built them? And what did they have to undergo every day? Enslavement and enslaved peoples is central to understanding the Roman world. For while you may have had, by the first century, a city of at least a million people and countless thousands of others across Latium, at least a third of that group of individuals is enslaved. And enslaved peoples existed throughout the Roman world. They were present in all forms of spaces, not only, of course, in large-scale plantations, but across the cities and countryside. The status of enslaved people often tended to vary but often under Roman law, of course, it was nearly a chattel status. The trade uh, in enslaved peoples existed throughout the Roman world. And so overall then, I think it's a big deal for us to really recognize and understand the importance of, of slavery. Third, great fire. So... In the year 64, there is a huge, huge, huge fire. So this is under the reign of Emperor Nero, uh, and it destroys a large portion of the downtown of the central area of the, the city of, of Rome. And it's significant for a couple of things, right? So uh, one is the fire itself, the, the destruction, of course, that it causes. Secondly, uh, Nero, of course, was noted as not exactly being the kindest of individuals. Uh, you know, the, the whole phrase of, you know, Nero fiddles while Rome burns, right? That's a thing. Uh, you know, it's a bit hyperbolic, but Nero certainly does use this as an excuse to consolidate additional authority, 
uh, you know, build a, a massive villa to himself in, in the center of the city, uh, and certainly the, the growing Christian church uh, and community is going to be blamed uh, in some cases for, for some of this. All right, that brings us to our fourth point, uh, which is the Christian church, Christian church, okay? Uh, so in the first century, especially, this is really kind of that time period that runs the arc of the growth and development of the, the ministry of Jesus Christ or Yeshua, uh, his death and resurrection, uh, which the Christians sort of understand, um, and then eventually the role of the apostles uh, and the development of kind of that Christian faith community. Uh, so that's a process that, be, that be, sort of begins in this century, uh, and the death of the apostles kind of culminates, brings the century uh, sort of to uh, an, an end. Uh, so this, of course, is the time period in which uh, followers of Jesus and his ministry, after his death, uh, of course, much of the chronicles and what we know from the New Testament of the Christian Bible, right, speak to the idea that many of those followers uh, saw Christ and believed in his resurrection uh, and then began spreading his uh, faith and understanding. Uh, and then, of course, the apostles are central to the, the development of that as well. This brings us to our fifth term, uh, and that is Hadrian's Wall. All right, Hadrian's Wall. Uh, so by the time you get to the end of the first century, the beginning of the second, you're going to have some new Roman leaders that are hell-bent on expanding uh, the Roman imperial state, Trajan uh, in particular. After him, you're going to have an emperor by the name of Hadrian. And why Hadrian is kind of an interesting deal for our purposes is Hadrian really is kind of central for changing some of the kind of defensive policies of the Roman world. Uh, and what he does is instead of kind of expanding the state, he's kind of a bit more focused on the idea of defending what the Romans already have. And so around the year 122 in the Roman province of Britannia, so in, in modern England, uh, he begins constructing a massive defensive wall network, which of course, yes, does give soldiers, you know, a great deal to do if they're not at war, right? Sort of this kind of thing. And much of it is still around today. You can go and look at it. Uh, you know, the ruins of it are, are a powerful reminder, really kind of of uh, the role of Rome uh, kind of across uh, the European world. Thank you.